One thing about being a farmer that I was not expecting was that you have to think seasons ahead, especially when you have new animals. And I'm not used to that. I'm not used to thinking like seasons ahead. We recently just got goats and we have them in this little room. It's just like a three-sided room and it's got that nice door there that they can go outside whenever they can come in or they can come out. They have hay over there. They have their supplements. They have everything that they need. But this is not gonna work for winter. I mean, it could work for winter, but there's a very good chance that our girls are already pregnant and it's not gonna work for winter and having babies. So it's only August, but we're having to think ahead today and figure out what we're gonna do for the winter time. So we designated this stall here. We're gonna make this stall into a winter goat stall. I'm excited, we're gonna build some levels so that they can jump up and sleep up off the ground. I also wanna build something that they can get under, that we can fill with hay, that they can get under and they can sleep under. So we wanna make this like a nice winter indoor area for the goat. I love these feeders that we have in every stall. The only thing that I don't like about them is that there's a lot more waste because the goats literally just pull it out handfuls at a time like that. So I'm considering putting some, some fencing, some two by four fencing. I think that's how, what size it is. But anyway, I'm considering putting it on the inside of this so that they only have enough space to pull out a tiny little bit of hay each time. Because once the hay hits the ground, you guys know goats, they won't eat it. So I wanna reduce the amount of hay that we waste. Build something that they love to be in in case the weather is really, really bad and it's like a blizzard and they can't get out for some reason during the day, which I think they'll mostly be able to get out. But I wanna make the coolest little goat stall. Plus, I have to think about if our goats are pregnant and how we will house everyone. So I wanna get into that this weekend. That's my goal this weekend is to build some goat stuff and clean up this stall and get it set up for winter. I honestly wasn't aware of how much planning goes into having animals because you have to think about their needs in every single season. The goats are loving that tree that we put down here. They come every day. They go up and they eat Chino's hay. <laughs> they all eat Chino and Willow's hay and they browse around for a while and then they come back to their own little field and they eat this branch. The Sam put all these branches in here so they could climb on them and eat them but they pretty much got this branch completely eaten. They're doing really well with it. <laughs> so the second thing that I found surprising when we became farmers was that you can't just, you can't just take your vet's recommendation all the time. Sometimes, quite often, you have to go with your gut. There have been a lot of times where I've just trusted blindly and not gone with my gut and then ended up paying for it in the end. I'll give you an example. When we got our goats, they were a little skinny, but nothing awful. I could tell that they were in good shape. They were just a little thinner than I wanted them to be. So when we talked about it with our vet, our goat vet, the vet said, it showed me how to test their weight by feeling like which bone and how to determine, which I already knew all that. And I still felt that they were a little thin and she thought that they were fine. But I know that they're out browsing. They're out browsing so much during the day. They have so much opportunity to eat on this farm. They're eating constantly and any normal goat would be obese eating what these guys are fed. Like they would be obese. And so I told her that I wanted to do a fecal test. And so she checked their FAMACHA score, which I already had done. I, I knew they didn't have worms because I treat naturally for worms. And as soon as we got them, we started treating for worms. I use a bunch of different things, but I change it up all the time so that they don't get resistant to it. But when they first came, I started giving them diatomaceous earth. Uh, I suspected it was working. They love it. They eat it really well. <laughs> But she didn't think that there was gonna be a problem because their FAMACHA score, if you don't know what a FAMACHA score is, it's where you check the in inner part of the eyelid to see what color it is um, to be able to tell their parasite. It, gives, it just gives a really good indication of whether or not they have worms. She assured me so many times that there probably wasn't a problem. We didn't need to do the fecal, but I knew there was a problem. I knew it in my heart because 
There was actually no reason that our goats would not be obese at this point because they're always eating, they're always browsing. We have so much property for them to browse and it just didn't make sense to me. So she ran the fecal and lo and behold, they had coccidia. So we were able to give them a shot and get that all fixed up. So they're gonna be well on their way to gaining weight. But if I had to stuck with my gut and really pushed to have the fecal, then I would always be doing everything that I could to get them to gain weight, even though the, she assured me that they're all a good weight. Like they're a healthy weight. There's nothing wrong with their weight. They had absolutely zero worms, zero worms. Uh, so the diatomaceous earth is doing its job but I'm so glad that I pushed to have the fecal so that they could get treated for coccidia because coccidia can be really hard on especially babies and pregnant mothers or nursing mothers. That is one thing that was really important that I had to learn and I think it goes in real life too. I think in real life, you often have to, to push doctors for your family and even for yourself for, to get them to listen to you. <laughs> this little goat wants to chase my dog. <laughs> I have to keep reminding her not to do it. So trust your instincts always. That is a hard lesson for me to learn. Hey guys, I just wanted to take a second to explain this a little bit further. In no way was our vet trying to dissuade me from doing a feat. She was just trying to assure me that our goats were in good health and that they appeared to be in good health and that there didn't seem to be a problem. My big point here was that the vet doesn't see everything that you see when you're at home. She has no way of knowing what we feed our goats and how much they actually are getting and the discrepancy between what their weight would be and what it was. And it's just little things like that that they don't have the opportunity to know. So you have to be the one to advocate when you think there's a problem. Even if the fecal came back clear, I would have still been so much happier that I pushed for it than just going with what she said about how they looked good. Because they did look good. They do look good. They look normal. They look okay. But to me, normal and okay is not where I want them to be. I wanted them to be a little bit more robust. I wanted them to have some revert reserves, especially for like breastfeeding moms or if they're um, pregnant. But the vet wasn't trying to tell me that I didn't know my goat. And she wasn't trying to dissuade me. She was just trying to reassure me. And I appreciated her efforts, but it was important for me to stick to my guns because I knew our goats and I knew their environment. So the last thing that I learned, not the last thing, I learned a lot of things, but something else that I learned about being a farmer that I didn't know before was that it's okay to make life easier for the animals that you have that need a little bit more. So we have, a, we have a duck and a goose on our farm and they're babies still and they're learning about the farm and where they wanna be and where they feel safe. They often won't, they know where their pool is, but they often won't go there because they wanna be with the horses. They've, they've decided that the horses are their little herd, their little flock, and they wanna stay with them to feel safe. So me having the pool over in this spot here, they won't use it because they don't want to leave their, where they feel safe. So today I'm going to move the pool to where they feel safe and still are able to be with the other horses. The other thing that I didn't know about being a farmer before we became farmers was that every animal deserves the kind of care they need. Not every, there's always that one animal that needs just a little bit more and it's okay to give them that little bit more. It's just like with people, how when you go to school and you don't learn something and the teacher makes you feel like if you're not learning it, it's because, because you're not smart. But in reality, they're just not teaching you the way that your brain is designed to learn. Everybody is smart and everybody has different needs. And we learned really quickly that it was important to meet the needs of all of our animals. Not just throw them all out there and expect them all to conform because there's always that one animal that just doesn't know how to conform. <laughs> our goats are just acting crazy. So I noticed that with the pool just a few feet away, the duck and the goose weren't using them <laughs> because they didn't feel safe. They wanted to be with the other herd members. So by moving it just a little tiny bit to an area where it was closer to their herd over there and it was in a place that they felt secure, 
then they're gonna swim more. And even though it took extra time to move their pool, and even though they knew where their pool was and could have just gone there whenever they wanted, the point was that they aren't going there. I want them to be able to stay clean and to be able to be refreshed and to be able to dip their beaks because without that pool and without the opportunity to get clean when they need to, it could introduce disease into our little flock of two. So herd management is another thing that I underestimated before we became farmers. Um, it, it means taking, making smaller herds if not everybody is able to get to the round bale, if horses are pushing other horses off, horses that aren't getting enough nutritionally are at risk for getting sick. Even if the horse is getting enough food, but they're in a hostile environment or they're with another horse that they don't get along with all the time, it can be detrimental to their emotional state and it can come out in so many different ways. It can come out in health, it can come out in behavior. So I feel herd management is probably the single most important thing to understand when you have a farm. It's the thing you spend your most time trying to figure out. It's, it involves watching constantly, seeing what needs to be changed, figuring out what you need to do to meet every single animal's needs from the smallest little animal on your farm to the biggest. Anyway, that's it. Those are the three things that I wasn't, I understood by reading about them. I didn't understand the level of time it required. If someone told me I'd be spending so much of my time every day just observing the animals and making changes so that everyone had exactly what they needed all the time, I would have thought they were crazy. Once upon a time, I thought that having a farm was about feeding, housing, cleaning up after, and loving animals. But there's just so much more to it than that. Don't you know that you're beautiful?